The last race is over and an era ends. Today we want to take a look back at the short ground effect era of F1 and what we learned from it. First of all, the name is confusing because all cars with a floor work with ground effect, but these cars had a fully curved floor instead of a flat one, which is more powerful. So how did it come to that? F1 had a problem of boring races and not a lot of overtakes for decades. The problem is always the same. The car behind drives in dirty air and loses so much downforce that it cannot follow the car in front. The first real attempt to fix that was the big regulation change in 2009 with huge front wings to not lose too much downforce and a slim high sitting rear wing to catch more clean air. That didn't work that well, but now the cars look strange. In 2011, the DRS was introduced to reduce drag of the car behind, so overtaking was easier but artificial. The cars were still not prettier and the strange noses of 2014 didn't help. So in 2017, the cars were getting a lot bigger in an attempt to make them look like real F1 cars again, with 400mm wide rear tires, bigger wings and bigger diffuser. But the main problem stayed. In the background, the team around F1 legend Ross Brown was working on a new set of rules. For aerodynamicists, the solution was clear. Wings are very sensitive to dirty air from the car in front, the floor is not. So downforce created by the floor was increased with curved floors and downforce from the wings was reduced. The next mechanism was to take away the team's tools to create outwash, like barge boards and outboard brake cooling flow. The idea was that instead of pushing the dirty front wheel wake out board and have it closing in behind the car, leaving the following car with less downforce, outwash should be reduced and instead clean air close in behind, making it easier to follow. For the first time, a new set of rules was analyzed and developed scientifically by a group of engineers, instead of pure gut feeling. The results were so promising that it was even considered to remove DRS, because you wouldn't need it anymore. The regulations should come out in 2021, but because of Corona, they were delayed to 2022. When the new cars finally hit the track, they were so elegant that the previous generation looked like tractors. And it became apparent that following each other was really easier. If a car was 20 meters behind another car in 2021, it lost 50% of downforce. In 2022, it lost only 20%. But the regulators kept the DRS system anyway. Because the teams needed to find a way to push the front wheel wake outside again to keep it away from downforce producing parts, they utilized the outer floor strake and used wide side pods. We discussed the topic frequently on the channel that large downwashing side pods would be the way to go with this new generation of cars. But we had Williams and Mercedes starting this generation with super small side pods and Ferrari, Alfa, Haas and Aston Martin started with large side pods but with a huge undercut to bring clean air to the back. The problem of small side pods was that they couldn't keep the front rear wake outside for long enough and a problem of this huge exposed floor area was that the new floor was producing so much downforce that floor edges were bending down and sealing the floor even better, which caused more downforce and the cars were sucked on the ground. If this happened, the downforce collapsed again and the car went back up. That was called purposing, and it became the biggest challenge of the new car generation. No one saw it coming, only Adrian Newey, who could still remember the last ground effect era at the end of the 1970s remembered this effect and Red Bull prepared for it. They stiffened up their floor, supported it with brackets and cables and created skid strakes at the side to ensure a minimum ground clearance. Ferrari was performing best at the beginning of this new era, the problem was just they didn't know why. Red Bull seemed to be the only team to understand the car and was able to reduce purposing. So it didn't take long and Red Bull was leading, while everybody else tried to understand what was going on. Step by step, every other team changed to large downwashing side pods and the teams who started with them had an experience advantage. Mercedes stick to their small side pod concept and could even win the second last race in 2022, which gave them the wrong idea over the winter. And in 2023, they started with the wrong concept again. Petty Lowe had to leave the team and with a two-year delay they changed to the dominating concept in 2024 and were catching up since then. McLaren started with a very undefined concept in 2022 and were pretty much nowhere. But 
They put the right people and facilities in place and from Austria 2023 every update worked. Ferrari was getting close to the constructor's title in 2024, but also the loss of good people to other teams hurt them a lot. McLaren was getting closer and in the end they could win the constructor's title in 24 and 25 and the driver's title in 25 as well. Since founder Mateschitz passed away in October 22, Red Bull was under pressure because of internal fights. They lost good people and needed long time to find themselves again. From a technical point of view we can say that the field was as close together as never before. We have very good drivers in F1 today. The engine regulations stayed constant for over 10 years. It was much easier for cars to follow each other and also the tires were getting a lot more durable. The result was that at some tracks all 20 cars were driving within one second, which is something we never had before. Overlapping became wear. This is good as this is ensuring close racing, but it's also a problem because you need a certain performance delta to be able to overtake. So if everyone has the same speed, there are no overtakes again. And in the meantime, teams were working on increasing outwash. So in 2025, a car which is 20 meters behind another car loses already 35% of downforce again. That is better than pre-2022, but you can see where this is going. And now we are looking at a new generation of F1 cars with flat floors again. Why? Because ground effect cars need to be driven as low as possible for maximum downforce and to keep them there and hold them in the perfect position, they need to be super stiff and that's not very comfortable for drivers. Another problem is the extensive spray on wet tracks. So instead of the elegant and long ground effect cars, we are now looking at shorter, slimmer, more old school looking cars again with a flat floor which produces less downforce and could introduce previous problems again. Check out my other video below to learn all about how to design a 2026 F1 car. How did you like the short ground effect era of F1 cars? Let me know in the comments below and see you at the next video.